Father, have your way. Have your way, we pray. And we're going to give you the praise and the glory for it all in advance. We're going to clap our hands in advance. We're going to shout hallelujah in advance. We're going to give you the praise, hallelujah, in advance. Because you are such a good God to us, God. We expect goodness from you because that's in your nature. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. And you sing your son. Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
my Herman family, it's your boy Will here. You already know what time it is. It is time for church. I just want to wish everybody watching us online or in person, happy Sunday and welcome to the service. But before we start the service off, I need you to do me a favor, okay? I need you to take your phone out. This is for our online audience as well as our in-person audience. And I need you to share this live. You're going to click that share button right at the bottom. And then also, I need you to tag three of your family or friends or co-workers who you know need this life-changing worship experience. We are so elated that you've chosen to spend some time with us this morning. And we trust that the presence of God will meet you wherever you're watching us from. As always, don't meet me there, beat me there. It's going to be a great day, family. Good morning, and welcome to Mount Hermon Church and our live stream worship service. My name is Reverend Dr. William Glover, and I'm so glad that you're joining us today. No matter what it looks like, we believe and know that God is in control. He's an ever-present help in a time of need. And with the help of modern technology, we can gather virtually to praise, worship, and to minister the Word of God. If this is your first time tuning in, we'd like to give you a very special thank you. It's our mission to cultivate a community of believers where we serve together, grow together, and do life together by adding redemptive value to every person, relationship, and family. We're pleased to bring that mission to you today. And once again, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and to personally invite you to join us as we serve, grow, and do life together. Welcome, church. Welcome to your uh, baptism. It's a uh, great day. We have three babies we uh, baptized in the day. So, baptism is just not uh, just dumping in the pool. Baptism is a powerful event. Baptism is so powerful. It's, when, you know, when you're baptized, it's a new creation. They're created to do great work. And once I baptize them, you're not coming out the same. The power of baptism also is, it's a testimony that Christ still saved today. All, you know, power of baptism, um, it's, it's great knowing the power of baptism. God is doing his work through you, and you are willing to follow his orders. Also, baptism is a, a confession, public confession. Jesus challenged his disciples to go out and confess their faith for others. We have three babies here confessing their faith before others. That is power. What is your name, daughter? Mari. Mari. Based on your faith and your profession and obedience to our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.
your name, daughter. Count your honor. Based on your faith and your profession and your obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and let's celebrate. Hallelujah with those who have been baptized. If you remember what it felt like when you went down in that water and came up, you felt new and refreshed and revived by the Lord. Can we go ahead and stand to our feet and welcome the Lord? Hallelujah into this house. He's the reason why we are here. We've come to give him praise. We've come to give him glory. We've come to give him honor. So put your hands together and talk to your Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We glorify you. We exalt you. We magnify your holy name. We declare that there is nobody like you in heaven, to heavenly Father, and all the earth. You are holy. You are righteous. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome in this place. You are mighty and you are worthy of our glory. You are worthy of our praise. It belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, put your hands together like this. For the battle. 
what he does. What the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, and you turn it for good. Now come on, can you declare that?
help this morning because I know how it is when you see that thing in front of you and it doesn't look like you're ever going to get the victory over it. It doesn't look like you're ever going to conquer that thing that's been plaguing you almost all your life. But we're here to declare that we serve a mighty God. We serve a God who is able to move mountains. It doesn't take him much to do it. You just need to get in line and lift up your hands and praise. He said bring your praise to the battle. You don't have to fight it, but bring your praise and your worship like you've already get the, got the victory. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to bring your praise, bring your weapon, bring your praise, bring your weapon to the battle that you are trying to fight on your own. God said you don't have to fight it. I'll fight it for you. If you just give me the praise and worship, then it's do it to me. So God, I bless you. God, I lift you up on high. God, I declare there's nothing too hard for you. God, I declare that you are awesome in this place. You are mighty. There's nobody who can stand beside you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We lift your name. We give you adoration. We declare that you have all power, all might in your mighty hand, God. It's by your name and by your spirit. We glorify you. We thank you, God. Yes, yes. You time or it's been a long time since you've been here would you just lift up your hands real quick so we can acknowledge you oh we see some people here come on can we just bless the lord for our visitors under the balcony back there we welcome you on behalf of dr glover and pastor cheryl we welcome you to the house of the lord today we are so glad that you decided to come and worship with us and we are declaring that god has a word for you just because you are here and he will meet you right where you need him amen we want to welcome those of you who are visiting with us via our online platform. If this is your first time, or would you please just put that in the chat and our online ambassadors will welcome you. Hallelujah. We're going to continue with our praise and our worship. And we're just going to shift it a little bit, but we're still worshiping. Hallelujah. Because we're worshiping through our giving. It is a joy to give. 
It is a joy to have to give. <laughs> we can put a praise on that just because I have something that I can give. I'm going to bless the Lord. So if you are giving uh, by cash or check here in the house, just lift up your hands and our greeters will place an envelope in your hands so that you can participate in the giving. We have someone in the back there. We have someone in the back. Great. Right here. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a few more. If you're giving by electronically, please follow uh, the prompts on the view screen. If you're giving, you can give the cash app or push pay. Hallelujah. Or go to the uh, website to give. Amen. So go ahead and lift up your gifts unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And begin to give him a wave offering with it. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for being such a faithful God. We thank you for being our source. You are the source of our supply. You are the source of whatever we have, God, whether it be monetary, whether it be strength, dear Heavenly Father, joy, peace. You are our source. And we thank you for being such a gracious God. You, you give so freely and plentifully. So God, we come back to you and we give in the same way. We're going to follow our Lord, our Savior, and give of what we have freely and plentifully, God. And we pray that you would take these, our offerings and our tithes, God, and that you would use it for the building of your kingdom, dear Heavenly Father. And we thank you for the promises that come with our obedience and our willingness to give, that the devourer is rebuked. We declare it and that we are living under obedience open windows and we give you the praise and the glory for it all and it's in your son Jesus name we pray amen hallelujah worthy is your name God worthy is your name there is no name above that name Jesus no name above that that name Jesus and we want to extol that name we want to lift that name now the psalm says I will exalt you my God the king I will praise your name forever and ever, every day, well, I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. And most worthy of praise. Most worthy of praise. We exalt your name. We exalt your name in this place, God. was my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for and now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore
Watch it now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve my praise. You're the name above all names. Sing me as your glory fills the place. You alone deserve you You're the name above the
to you. Can we just have a real brief, quick, old-fashioned testimonial service? Amen. For those of you who don't know what that is, it just, you just randomly share with someone the goodness of God in your life. Amen. If you can legitimately, authentically testify that God has been good to you, I'm going to give you about a minute to tell as many people as you can. I'm going to give you a minute to randomly testify. Amen. This is testimonial service. You got about a minute. You can move. You can get up. Just tell somebody. Just brag on them. Don't just sit there like a love on a log. If he's been good to you, tell somebody about it. Hallelujah. You can't say nothing, but he woke me up this morning and started me on my way. You can't say nothing about a flow to my right mind. You can't say nothing, but, but the blood is still running.
gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta get it out. I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta get it out. Anybody else? I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta get it out. I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta get it out. I gotta praise. Hallelujah. That's all I'm saying is he's worthy. That's all I'm saying. Come on, put your hands one more time before you take your seat in the house of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to just pause and say, thank you. And this is in line with my message today. Sometimes you just got to pause and say thank you thank you just thank you just thank you hallelujah amen well listen before i get to the ministry of the word and let me give you all an opportunity to come to yourself amen some of y'all been caught up in the holy ghost so let me let me give you an opportunity to come to yourself. A couple of housekeeping matters. Amen. And many of you witnessed today, we had three candidates for baptism. Amen. And we're so blessed because uh, they were all young people. Amen. Amen. And um, we, don't, we don't have a set age for baptism in this church. We, uh, we baptize uh, at what we call the, the age of accountability. And that is the age when they're old enough to recognize their need for salvation and voluntarily receive Jesus into their heart as their Lord and Savior. Amen. When they're old enough to do that and know what they're doing, they become candidates of baptism. And all of these babies that were baptized today requested baptism. Amen. We didn't have to lead them into it. They requested it. Amen. I had an opportunity to meet with each one of them, and I asked them, you know, they, they know what they, did they know what they were doing? They said, yes, sir, we being baptized. <laughs> Do you know what baptism means? It means I believe in Jesus. That's enough for me right there. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we complicate things that Scripture makes simple. Amen? So we want to present the certificates today to our, our babies. Amen? And, and, and uh, if, if, if I miss a syllable in the name, uh, please forgive me. Amen. Amen. So we have Shanara Mark. Amen. That's my little precious one. Come on. Amen. Amen. And, and I need someone to act as an official photographer. Amen. Come here, baby. It's your certificate. You hold that right there. Amen. I, I need someone to be an official photographer and get a picture of me in this baby. Amen. Bring up the way I am, so I'm gonna come down to where she is. Now she's so cute, I gotta give me a kiss. Y'all get this. Macaria Rice. Another cute one. Come on. Amen. Amen. You come stand right there next to your sister. Amen. All right, y'all got to come up. Stay right there, baby. Amen. Amen. And then 
uh, Claviana Green. Claviana Green. Amen. You're standing. Okay, she stepped out, so mommy's going to stand in. Amen. All right. God, a Give God a prayer. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Y'all may take your seat. Thank you so very much. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, I think I left an announcement on my seat. Let me have that. Amen. Oops, excuse me. Amen. There is another piece of information that I need to share with you. Uh, let me ask that my men's leadership team, uh, who promised to stand with me this morning, come stand with me and be my strength. Y'all come on. I got some news to share, and I told them I am not sharing this news by myself. Actually, I did not say that. They said, Pastor, we will stand with you. So let me tell that story right. Amen. Where the rest of them at? It was more around the table than, uh, oh, where, where they at? Come on. Amen. So you know how sometimes when you purpose to do some things and it just seems like it's difficult, right? And, and then it just, then it sometimes starts to feel like you're pressing. And then it starts to feel like, well, man, should we really be doing this? <laughs> well, we have gone through that progression in regards to the planning of the church picnic. Amen? Uh, and it's just been a challenge the whole time. The original date we couldn't get, so we moved it up. And then, of course, I made the executive decision uh, the weekend of the 30th to cancel because it would forecast rainstorms all day and it turned out to be a beautiful sunshiny day amen and then we purposed to reschedule for uh, this weekend and uh, as it turns out um, the logistical side of it uh, we're just pressing to get a plan to do it in excellence and the men said you know pastor we become accustomed to moving in excellence but anything we do with the church it just feels like we're pressing this you know, maybe uh, we ought to cancel it for now and re start the planning for next year uh, at a more opportune time. Amen. And so they wanted to stand with me while I made that announcement. So anybody got something to say, see these gentlemen. Amen. It's, they they made me do it. Amen. Well, I told y'all y'all got to fall on the blade sometimes for me. Now, don't. Sometimes you just got to take just got to just got to and uh, we've been planning events for the church all year long the past couple, several years and they did such an excellent job and and I, I trust their counsel amen amen so we're ca we're canceling the picnic amen uh, for next weekend but we're committed to having it and uh, it'll be a part of our church calendar for next year amen thank you gentlemen amen very much amen and uh, in line with that one of the things we factored in is that there, uh, there is at least one other significant thing that's happening next weekend uh, that's connected to uh, one of our elders uh, in the church. And Elder Dan Spears, will you please stand? Uh, Elder and chair of our board of directors. Amen. And Ms. Diane uh, does, you all know she's a longtime employee. She's, she is Miss Lee Memorial. Amen. No, she is. She just, I, was, I, I was in a meeting uh just this last week at Lee and all I heard was Miss Diane, Miss Diane, Miss Diane. I just threw my hands like now y'all know she's my member, right? Y'all yeah, okay, all right, as long as y'all know. Amen. Uh but just so well respected in the Lee Health community and also the community at large, uh, for all that she does on so many different levels and even in the life of this church. Uh but uh she is uh, sponsoring uh, an event called Stay Gorgeous Girls. It's a girls only health fair event, uh, event in partnership with Lee Memorial Hospital and um, it's, it's a be the best you can be uh, uh, event uh, and it's free. It's going to be at Dunbar High School next weekend on the 14th. Amen. So I didn't feel too bad counseling because this event is going on and we want to promote it. We want to sponsor it. Amen. Uh, we want to help promote it. And it's for girls only. And uh, it's from 10 a.m. to 6 uh, p.m. at Dunbar. 
and um, they're going to be given uh, prom dresses and jewelry. They're going to have hair and makeup uh, trends. They're going to learn how to develop their personal skills and making friends and enhancing self-confidence and even beginning conversations about fitness and nutrition even as a young age. So this is an investment in our girls. We have young girls from this congregation who are participating. Amen. And I don't know whether openings of yes so you can seek miss diane out if diane out if you have young girls who would benefit on something that's designed to build their self-esteem amen and to make them empowered young women how I many you all know that's very important amen so in lieu of our picnic we want to put our weight and support behind this stay gorgeous event amen can we give god a praise for that amen now i got one more housekeeping thing and i promise i'm gonna get to the to the word, the praise team saved us some time because if Will was here, we'd still be worshiping right now. He gonna have something to say to me about that. Oh, you need to cut worship shorter. So we, we fight every week about that. Amen. God give us grace. <laughs> Pastor Cheryl, will you please come? She didn't expect me to do this. Just, just, just bring your pretty self on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So, amen. Um, I'm asking her to stand with me. You all know um, God's just opening so many amazing doors for Pastor Cheryl in regards to her self-love ministry to women. And we've been sharing that journey, uh, even international doors. He's opened up, and there's some big things happening. Hopefully, we'll be announcing soon in regards to a U.K. tour. Amen. Uh, but we're still uh, working on that. Uh, but I have her standing with me today uh, because uh, for the past year and a half, uh, she's been working on a book project, amen? And we wanted to share uh, with you uh, that she's going to be a published author soon. Amen? And I'm so proud of her, amen, because uh, writing ain't easy, amen? And uh, she's worked very hard on this book project, and um, uh, she's been working with her publishers, and uh, they're planning a release date uh, around the new year. Amen. We want to put you on alert, ask you to continue to pray with her as they go through the editing process and finalizing the marketing and the promotions and everything and prepare yourself uh, to support. Amen. Uh, but we wanted to share with our church family uh, because she was interviewed uh, recently and that is going to be airing soon. Uh, yeah, tomorrow the interview is going to be aired. Amen. And we didn't want the first mention to be to you guys on the interview because you're our family. You need to be on the front end of the news. Amen. Amen. So can we just celebrate what God is doing through her? Amen. And, um, and keep her in your prayers. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Turn to your neighbor now. Word time. And I don't know, am I the only one hearing this? It just did it. Amen. Uh, if y'all can fix that or hook me up with another one, uh, whatever you need to do, just interrupt me and do it so that uh, we don't have that distraction. Amen. Amen. So let me have you stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. And let me welcome those. Well, let me, is this the one they're directing me to get? Is, okay. Amen. Test one, two. Well, that just sound better already anyway. Amen. Amen. So if you would turn with me, please, in your Bibles to... Uh, the book of Acts. Yes. Yes, book of Acts chapter 20, verse 35. The book of Acts chapter 20, verse 35. As we're continuing in our series on giving and beyond. Amen. Have you been blessed and encouraged by this series? Have you been educated and informed by this series? Amen. That's very important. I want you educated. I want you informed. Amen. Amen. And uh, so Acts chapter 20, verse 35, we'll be reading from the King James Version. If you have it, can you say amen? And if not, you can read with us from, from the view screen. And this is the Apostle Paul, and he, he, he part of this verse. Amen. Amen. 
How that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the word. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And I want to emphasize that last clause because we have internalized the opposite. We internalize the blessing is in the receiving. So when we talk about getting blessed, it's from a perspective of what we have received. But Jesus said, which is something we will explore a little bit today, it is more blessed. How many want to be more blessed? <laughs> it's more blessed to give than to receive. Amen? So in keeping with our series on giving, I've taught on giving as Today, I want to teach on giving as an act of generosity. Giving as an act of generosity. Amen? Because I don't know about you, I want to be more blessed. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we exalt your great name. We declare your lordship and your sovereignty. And as we continue to teach on giving, I pray, Father, that you'll help us to understand the principles of giving. I pray you'll help us understand your heart towards the giver. And I pray you'll move us to a place to where we are intentional givers on principle and not emotional givers being prompted by promises. We ask that you would touch our ears that we would hear, our minds that we would understand, our hearts that we would receive and our wills that we would set ourselves to do your word and we will give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We bind up anything that oppose and hinder your purposes. We command it to loose in the name of the Lord and we release the spirit of the Lord for you have said, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. All of God's people said, amen. You may take your seat in the house of the Lord. Giving as an act of generosity. Giving as an act of generosity. By way of introduction, let me mention to you that there are more than 7,000 promises of God in Scripture. More than 7,000 promises from God to us in Scripture. A divine promise is God uh, committing to do something if we meet the conditions of what he's committing to do. If we meet the conditions, then God will release the promise. And there's 7,000 plus promises in the Bible on a wide variety of subjects. Promises on success, promises on satisfaction, promises on fulfillment, promises on health, all kinds of promises, and everyone has a condition attached to it. And if you meet the condition, you will get the promise. I teach a series on conditions of the promises. There's some things that we pray for and believing for when really we ought to set ourselves to meet the conditions for. Because if God has promised it, and set a condition for it, you don't need to pray for it. You don't even really need to believe for it. You need to meet the condition of it. And if you meet the condition, God will release it. Amen? So maybe we need to revisit that teaching sometime soon. And in the Bible, grab this, the number one thing, the number one concept that has promises connected to it is the concept of generosity. Let me have everybody say generosity. While the word generosity itself does not appear in the King James Version of the Bible, the concept does. Now, here's what we have to understand about biblical and and understand. There is what the Bible says. 
you read what it says don't mean you understand what it is teaching. Because scripture is an ancient document that was written to a different audience in a different time in a different culture. And oftentimes to understand scripture, you have to understand the time and the culture and the audience it was written to. And once you can understand the message to that particular audience, then you can draw the principle for our times and our lives. Let me illustrate for you simply. There is a, a directive in the book of Acts that Paul gave the New Testament church, and he says, greet thy brethren with a holy kiss. That's what it says. Now, for people who say uh, the Bible says it and that settles it, well, what that means is, is that every believer whose paths you cross, you should kiss them. Because that is what it says. But the question is, is that what it is teaching? Oh, Y'all going to prove me in a minute. Is that what it is teaching? Is it actually teaching us to go around kissing each other? No, what you understand about the culture was a common greeting Greeting during that time was that they would kiss each other as a greeting. So it says kiss, but it is teaching to We typically don't greet strangers with kisses. We extend the hand. Because we don't know you like that to be kissing on you. I'm greeting you by extending my hand to you, which is a gesture that I'm not going to treat you like an enemy. If you act right, I'll receive you like a friend. I got to understand it. So it says one thing, but it is teaching on. Do y'all understand? See, y'all better stop following them Facebook teachers and propers who can tell you what it says, but not what it is teaching. Come on, tell somebody, you got to develop a, well, this is a long statement. Don't tell nobody that. <laughs> Thought about what I was about to say. I'm like, that's just too long, amen? <laughs> You've got to develop a, 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 a more sophisticated understanding of biblical interpretation than that, Amen? So when I say that the word generosity does not appear, it doesn't mean the concept is not there. Do you understand? So generosity is the, the, the concept that has the most promises attached to it in the Bible. There are more promises related to being generous than any other subject. So a good way to meet the conditions of the 7,000 promises is to develop a spirit of generosity. A good, easy way. Just learn how to be a generous person. Amen, somebody. Learn to be a generous person. Well, what is generosity? Generosity, number one, is having an attitude, a disposition, a willingness a readiness. Now, let me pause right there. Generosity is an attitude, a willingness, a disposition. It is a readiness. So before you give anything, you have to have a generous spirit. See, some folk can't develop a spirit of generosity because you so focus on what may be required to give. So you close your spirit to being generous until you hear what is being required of you. But if you're waiting to hear what is being required, you have no intention of being generous. Your generosity is conditional upon what is being asked. I ain't praying with me up in here. So, so, so as we mature and as we grow, and as we begin to understand what scripture teaches about being generous, we understand that we have to develop the posture and the spirit and the the soil of our spirit first. Amen, somebody. And then we can.
can be a generous people. Do y'all understand? Amen, somebody. So we, we want to cultivate that spirit in you. If you're going to give as an act of generosity, then you've got to develop and cultivate that spirit within you. It is an attitude, a disposition, a willingness, a readiness to give more of something than what is expected. More of something than what is required. Amen, somebody. That's the spirit of, of generosity, to get to the next level, to allow God to develop the spirit of generosity in you individually and even in our congregational culture. Say that phrase with me, congregational culture. Say it again, congregational culture. See, God didn't enter into just changing you. God wants to change the culture. A culture is a shared set of beliefs and norms and acceptable behaviors. Every business, every organization, every family, every church has a culture of unspoken rules, sometimes spoken, that govern our behavior together. What might be acceptable as a part of the culture of this church might not be acceptable as a part of the culture of another church. So just because you get a little happy in here and we're okay when you take a little trot around the building, don't go down the street and think that that's okay in that church because that might not be a part of their culture. We get a little free in the Holy Ghost and there might be a little bit of spunk tongue speaking and sometimes a, a laying on our hands and y'all free to come up and lay out on this altar. Don't go to somebody else at church and think that because we do that up in here. Everybody do that. It may not be a part of their... Do y'all understand? So we have a culture. And what I want you to understand to get to where God has taken us, to show God we are serious about what he speaks in our midst. God wants to know that we have a culture of generosity. Can I just on principle get everybody to say amen to that? That don't cost you a dime. Can everybody just say culture of generosity? Can I ask you to pray a prayer with me right now? Come on, let me ask you to lift your hands up. And if you would be so kind, let's pray this prayer over our congregation. Say, Lord, Lord make us a generous congregation that has a dominant culture, a generation, a, a dominant culture of generosity. And Lord, start with me. See, some of y'all ain't say that. Amen. You can put your hands down. If we're going to develop that culture, it's got to start somewhere. Let it start with, are you hearing me? Amen, somebody. So we got to develop that culture where, where giving is an act of generosity. It's an act of worship. It can be an act of sacrifice, which I'm, I'm asking you for a sacrifice. We talked about that last week. I'll come back to that in the service this week. But, 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 but it's an act of sacrifice. But it's also an act of generosity. When you understand worship, giving is worship, and giving is an act of sacrifice, and giving is an act of, of generosity, then watch this now. You get over the things that cause hangups for people when it comes to giving to the work of the Lord. You don't get hung up on those things because for you, it's an act of worship. For you, it's an act of generosity. For you, it is a disposition that you have, and I'm going to show you in a moment, that positions you to be blessed and honored by God. Because the Bible says God loves cheerful givers. He loves generous givers. They meant somebody. So we want to develop. about what he says, what he is speaking. So, so, so generosity uh, 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 is having an attitude, a disposition, a willingness, a readiness to give more of something that is expected when it is required. Develop means to grow, a cause to grow, to become more mature and advanced. How many of you know that when you stop growing, you start dying? When you stop growing, you start dying. You, 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 you ought to be a lifelong learner. 
listen, spiritual truth is such is that you never get to the bottom of the truth because there are levels and depth to spiritual truth. I am odd that I've been a Bible, a student of the Bible literally since I was 15 years old. At my quest to begin to understand scripture uh, beyond just quoting a verse. about religious things amen and I, I was a student then and then I committed myself to going to Bible study because I Bible school because I wanted to know scripture and after Bible school I committed to go study uh, religion at the university because I wanted to understand my faith in the context of of other faiths and then as my graduate degree I did it in ministry all I'm saying is I've been studying scripture and Bible for a very long time and here's what I have come to understand I know nothing because God keeps teaching me. He keeps revealing to me. He keeps growing me. He keeps developing me. Don't ever think because you can quote a few scriptures, you know something. Spiritual arrogance and pride is the greatest uh, a hindrance to spiritual growth that there is. When you start to think and act like you know something, you know nothing. The more you learn about God, the things of God, the closer you get to God, the more unworthy you feel. I wish I had a witness up in here. And the more you begin to understand, the more you do not know. There's so much to who God is and his word that our finite minds cannot grasp the fullness of it because God is infinite. Are y'all hearing me up in here? You are to always be hungry to grow. Now do this. Touch somebody and tell them I'm hungry to grow. So God wants to develop that spirit in us. And if you're not growing, you are dying. Now watch this now. You not only want to grow, you want to make sure that it is healthy growth. Healthy growth. Cause, 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 cause cancer grows, but it's not healthy. It ain't grown toenail grows, but it's painful. The problem with some of you all, if you are letting the wrong thing grow in your life and it's not healthy and it's causing you pain. Because it's not healthy. God wants you to grow, but he wants you to grow in a healthy way and not a toxic way. Are you hearing me? Because, you know, even nutritionists and medicine, you are what you eat. You are what you eat. You are what you consume spiritually. You can't eat at everybody's table. Just because everybody is serving don't mean you need to eat it. Are you praying with me this morning? So God wants us to be a growing people. Tell somebody, tell them God wants you to be a growing people. He meant somebody. He wants you to be a growing people. He wants us to develop. And why does he want us to be a growing people? And why does he want us to be a generous people? Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 9 and 7, and I didn't give you this media. If you can find it, great. If not, don't worry about it. But the last clause in 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, uh, uh, Paul says that God loves generous givers. He loves you because he loves you. But there is a favoritism he puts on you when you're generous. Can I tell you, this is going to hurt some of y'all's feelings. But it's for your good. If you're not generous, you're not God's favorite. I don't care how gifted, how talented you are. If you're not generous, you are not his favorite. Paul tells us who his favorite is. Paul says in the sec last clause of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verse 7, thank you, media. Appreciate your flexibility. I said 9-7. Oh, God, it might be 9 17. Mm, that's it. Thank you. Second Corinthians. Amen. The last clause, Paul says, for God loves what? Mm. Now, this is beyond 
his love for you that prompted him to give his only begotten son. I'll talk about that in a moment. This is a special love, a favored love. God favors generous people. Am I making it up or are you reading it for yourself? I'm God's favorite. Are you generous? Doesn't favor you. I don't think he favors you because you're cute and pretty and, and you're anointed and you're spiritually gifted. But the Bible tells us who God favors. God favors people who are cheerful givers, who are generous givers, who give in the right spirit, the right attitude, the right disposition that I've been talking about. That's who God favors. So if you want to be favored by God, make up in your mind that you're going to become generous. Nothing cute, nothing special. That's the principle. That's who he favors. Somebody got to go back to the drawing board. They got to go back to their closet. They got to rethink the whole relationship about God in terms of how he relates to you. Amen? Paul says he loves cheerful giver. Listen to how this is translated, uh, that phrase cheerful giver is translated in a says, God loves people who love to give. Who does God love? Now, he loves everybody, but he's got a special love for people who love to Mm-hmm. Listen to how the New Contemporary Version says. It says, God loves a person who happily gives. The Message Bible says, God loves it when the giver delights in giving. That's why when we give, it ought to be like the worship and not a transaction. We, we, when we give, we're not collecting your money. We are. Get me wrong. We literally are, but it's more than that. It's you. Oh, God help me, Holy Ghost. It's you. Seize an opportunity to show God you are delighting in your giving. Balling your money up so tight that it takes the finance team 20 minutes to unball it. It's not a demonstration that you are delighting in giving. And we get quite a few gifts that I know were not given in delight. Because they come balled all wadded up. And I can't help but believe if you balling it up, you're balling your face up, you're balling your spirit up, and there is no delight in you giving that gift. Thank you. We can use it. But I am bound to tell you that you are demonstrating to God that you have no delight in supporting the work of the ministry because you are not giving with a delightful spirit. Can we purpose today that you will unball your money, that you will stretch it out, that you will crease it out so that when they take it out of the basket or the envelope, that we don't have to iron press your money? Because the bank don't want it all balled and twisted. And they, they want every bill together. They want it all turned in the right direction so they can just feed it in the machine and make the... the can we give with delight in this congregation? Please, unball your money. And if you got to close your hand because you are ashamed of what you are giving, number one, if it is the best gift you got, there is no reason to feel shame. And number two, if it is not the best gift you got, then give more. So you don't feel no shame. Thank you. Are y'all all right with me talking to y'all like this? He delights in folk who delights in giving. Woo, boy, I like that. He delights in folk who delight. In. I like to see more delight when we give. I don't know why there's no more delight. The, the praise team singing delightful songs. 
You ought to give delightfully and then show your delight. Amen, somebody? Whew. Now, one more. I'm going to keep it moving because I, I expected to get through this message today, but this is the pace I'm going, so it'll be what it'll be. Amen? Uh, here's what the Living Bible says. The Living Bible says, cheerful givers are the ones God prizes. Mm-hmm. Do you know what the, the one God prizes? You know, you, you want a prize, you put it on the shelf. You put it up on the wall. Help me, Holy Ghost. You put it on display. You hold it up because you won that prize. This is teaching us when you give cheerfully, God prizes you. God will hold you up. Ooh, what does that mean, preacher? Now, this is just the Holy Ghost downloading right now. I don't know if I got a chapter and a verse for this one. Amen. But, but this is the Holy Ghost right now. What, what, what the Lord just dropped in my spirit is that when you give, he'll hold you up like you a prize. What does that mean? When you give, he'll make sure you get the promotion. When you give, he'll make sure the doors of opportunities open up for you. When you give, he'll make sure all your needs are met. Because God wants to show, God help me, Holy Ghost. God wants to show everybody who's a non-giver, I take care of the people who give. They are my prizes. I will hold them up. I will not let them fall because they are cheerful. Are y'all hearing me? I don't know about you, but I want to be prized by God. Ooh, somebody holler, won't he do it? Yes, he will. Glory, hallelujah. I'm trying to hold back a preach right now. Anybody in here ever have God hold you up when you thought you was going to fall? Don't play with me. I ought to have a witness up in here somewhere. Anybody ever have God open a door that they told you were closed to you? And God made it happen in it? It looked like it was going one way, but between midnight and 6 a.m., God had turned it all around. I came to tell you today, he's prizing you. He's holding you up as a prize of his faithfulness. Hallelujah, somebody. Glory, Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. That's what generosity is, and God prizes it. Number two, number two, uh, we ought to uh, 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 give generously because generosity is love in action. Love in, look at somebody and say, love requires action. See, some of y'all, you keep falling in love in situations of people where there ain't no action other than verb, other than verbiage. Love is not verbiage. Love is action, and generosity is love in action. Oh God, why, 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 why do you say that, preacher? I, I, I say that because the Bible teaches that God loves us generously. Let me show you. We quote it all the time, but we don't see generosity in it. I'm gonna show you the generosity. John three sixteen. John three sixteen. Y'all have it. Let's read it together. It says, For God so loved the, that he gave his only begotten, that, believe it, should not, but what? Let me show you. Generosity is love in action. The most common, the word most commonly associated with generosity in scripture is the word give. The word most commonly associated with generosity is the word give. The Bible says, God so loved that he. Whenever the Bible talks about God's love, there's always action. Always. Because generosity is love in action. Love requires action. And generosity is love and action. So we see the action connected with God's love. Now let me show you the generosity. Jesus help me. It wasn't just that God gave his son. 
The generosity in this verse is that God gave his only. That's the generosity. He gave his only. Only means sole, exclusive, no other. Only is something that is rare, unique, and invaluable. So one that he gave his son. What was generous was that he gave his only son. Oh, God help me. Listen, there is only one you. One you. Look at somebody tell me there's only one me. And if you confuse, there's only one you. There's only there's one. And, and the person next to you probably thinking, thank God, thank God, thank God. Thank God. No. Yeah. But but they, they can celebrate it because there's only one. There's only one. 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 Amen. No other. One. Hallelujah, somebody. There's only one. Do you know how rare and unique and exclusive that makes you? you, you, you one. There's only one you. Amen, somebody. And you only have one life. You know how rare and unique that makes your life one life that makes an imprint. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. One, your life that makes a difference. You got to decide the difference that your life is going to make because there is only one. Jesus, help me. And oftentimes we don't miss the imprint of the oneness of the lives that are in our lives until that imprint has been gone. Now it has, is gone. Now suddenly we miss it. Now suddenly we appreciate it. And the reason we miss it and appreciate it when it is gone because we see the holes that are left that that one life filled. Are y'all following me? One, one, one. We have one soul. Help me. One soul. That makes your soul unique and rare. Amen, somebody. Watch this. God gave his, his only son. That's how generous if he had another. Because, oh, well, he gave one of several. But he had no other. He gave his. And any time you give your only anything, it is a generous act. Do I have a witness up in here? So he didn't just love us. He loved us general, generously. Watch this now. Watch this. His only one unique, rare son he gave that we might be saved. Oh, God. He takes the one unique, generous, rare thing. There's none other like it. God help me, Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says that Jesus is the only begotten son. That there's something about him that is begotten of God. That, that his DNA is divine. And he is only one born and uh, of divine DNA. It makes him rare and unique. Watch this. He gave his only unique divine son with divine DNA that we might become, uh, we might become sons of God. Born again sons. So you know what that means? That means he valued you more than the life of his son. Some of y'all going to grab this in a moment. He placed more value on your life than he placed on the life of his son, which he gave. He had to value you more because he gave up his most valuable thing to redeem you. Does anybody understand that? It was a very generous act to save. God gave his all. And we have got the nerve to not want to be generous with God. Can I pose on y'all to pause one second and just give God the most generous praise that you have? For him giving such a generous gift. Come on, somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. 
Thank you for your generosity. Not just that you gave your son, but you gave your own life to save us. It was the most generous act in all of scripture. Hallelujah, somebody. Generosity is love in action. Number three, not only is generosity love in action, but generosity demonstrates your faith in God. Generosity demonstrates your faith. It's love in action, but it also demonstrates your faith in God. Every time you are generous, it demonstrates your faith because it shows you a trust in God. Uh, let's read Philmon uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 6, first in the King James. Are y'all good? First in the King James. Listen to what Philmon says. He says, that the communication of thy faith may bring, may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Now, sometimes Paul requires some interpretation. Amen. I'm running short on time. Amen. So, I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation that does interpretation for us. The New Living Translation says, and listen to this very carefully. And I am praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith. As you understand and experience all the good things we have in Christ. Paul says, put into action the generosity that comes from faith. Generosity is a demonstration of faith. Generosity is faith in action also. I am praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith. If you are moving in faith and believing God the way you say you believe God, generosity is a demonstration of that faith. Can I get very practical for you? Have you ever noticed, and I'm amazed by this, how many people who claim to be of great faith and yet are not generous? They claim to be great people, great faith, and are yet not generous. Watch this. They have faith to believe that they will receive something from God but not enough faith to believe God to give something. If you got faith to believe, you're going to receive. And you can't have faith to believe God when you give. You're killing your faith. And Paul says faith without works is what? It's dead. So if you believe to receive, then it's the other side of the coin. When it comes time to give, you ought to be believing while you are giving. Paul says it is a demonstration of your So every time there's an opportunity to give, you only have faith to receive, but you also have faith. Amen. Number four. Number four. And I like this one. Amen. Nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, you might like this one. I love it when I'm in teach mode. I know some folk want me to just get into a good preach, and ain't nothing wrong with that, but, but I love it when I'm in teach mode. Amen? That was just me having a moment of satisfaction. It's, I, you just witnessed this. I thought out loud. Amen? Amen. You caught me thinking out loud. Okay, number four. Generosity, generosity brings God's blessings. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 22 and 9 says, He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Now, let me help us out. Let me read that in a couple of other translations. Uh, the International Children Bible says, A generous person will be blessed. Just going to read that first clause. A generous person will be, not might. Will be. A blessed hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want God to bless your hands, and what that means, if your hands are blessed, anything your hands touch will be blessed. If your hands are blessed, anything you say. Generous hands are blessed. You want some blessings to rest on your hands? Make your hands generous. 
Hallelujah, somebody. Generous hands are blessed hands. Somebody holler, bless my hands, Lord. Hallelujah. The NIV says a generous man himself will be blessed. God's word says whoever is generous will be blessed. God blesses generosity. He blesses the hands of the generous. Other verses in the Bible bears this out. For instance, Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 10. God's word translation says, Be sure to give to them without any hesitation. When you do this, the Lord will bless you to do. Folks, this is one of them promises I'm talking about. There is a promise here, and then there's a condition connected to it. You meet that condition, God is making you a flat-out promise upon which his name is based. Amen? And that promise, uh, God, God, God says, when you, when, you, when you give, he says, he will bless whatever you put your hands to and whatever you set out to do. God is saying, God is saying dream. God, God is saying some goals. Hallelujah, somebody. And God says, all I need you to do is dream it, watch this, and set out to do it. That's, that's what it says. Whatever you set out to do. He, 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 says, he, he says, everything you work for and set out to do. Ooh, God just dropped something in my spirit right there. See, God ain't waiting for you to get everything you need. God ain't waiting for you to know everything you need to know. God ain't waiting for you to become the resident expert. God is saying, be generous, make the plan, and set out to do it. Don't you know anybody who's ever done anything great? And some of the greatest success stories in the history of this nation and the world are people who didn't know. And God blessed it, and it turned into something that they never even imagined to do. Oh, I want to cultivate something in your spirit that there's some things you set out to do. There's some dreams you have given up on. I wish I had a witness up in here. That you, some of you, you, you've had so many setbacks in life, you've given up on fulfilling God's purpose for your life. But I release in the name of the Lord Jesus a spirit of generosity upon you, and I release you to set out to do the thing that you know God is calling and edging and nudging you to do. Just set out to do it and watch God. God move. There's an old saying, hallelujah. That, 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 I'm going to paraphrase. I don't think I'm going to get this right, but it is. Something about the first step on making a great journey is to take the first step. Set out to do it. Can you encourage the person next to you? And I'm going to try to wrap this up. Can you encourage the person next to you? Say, whatever God called you to do. Whatever you are, whatever you are dreaming of doing, first be generous, and then just set out to do it. And God has promised to bless it. Seal it with a praise. Seal it. That's a promise with a condition. Because you know what will happen when you set out to do it? He would alter your steps. When you set out to do it, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. When you set out to do it, he'll open up doors that you didn't expect to be open. He'll bring you into contact with people you didn't expect to come in contact with. When you set out to do it, you'll be the answer to prayers people are praying. And they'll be the answer to prayers you are praying. When you set out to do it, you will attract people who want to be a part of something that's bigger than they are. When you set out to do it, you become the solution to somebody's problem. When you set out to do it, you become somebody God can use to elevate and bless somebody else. I just want to encourage you, set out to do it. I'm preaching to myself right now. Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about the people. Don't worry about likes and clicks and invites. Just set out and do it because God on your side is more valuable than all of that. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you set out to do it. Set out to do it. Set out to do it. 
Some of y'all waiting for a perfect circumstance, a perfect situation. Ain't going to happen. Just set out. Set out. Set out to do it. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes, 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 yes. God promises to bless the generous. And that's why Acts 20 and 35, last clause says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It uses the word adjective more. More means greater, a greater amount. Ha, huh. a greater amount. It's more blessed, a greater amount to give than to receive. It, it's more blessed. It's a greater amount to give, to receive. The one who's given has a greater amount than who's given to. So that is a blessed position. How many want to be in the blessed position? Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. I would to God that every encounter I'm in the blessed position. I, I would to God that every encounter I'm in the position to be the giver and not the receiver because the greater blessing is in being the giver. Not only the giving position is the blessed position. See, we've been conditioned to think that the blessed position is the receiving position. Hey, the receiver receives a blessing, but the blessed position is the position of the giver. You few who grab that, thank you so much. Change your thinking. Change your thinking. Stop asking God for a blessing and ask God to make you a blessing. Because the only way you can be a blessing is that you have to be a blessing with. We've been conditioned to just want to be the blessee, to receive the blesser. But God wants to change our congregational mindset. He wants to move us out of looking to be in the position of the receiver, but to be in the position of the giver because that is the blessed position. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the blessed position. I want to be in the position that whenever giving is required, I've got a spirit of disposition and a willingness to give because God will make sure certain that I always have so that I can be a blessing because God is always looking for people who can be a blessing. Are you hearing me? Oh, God, I pray for these people. I pray for those who are listening under the sound of my voice. I pray for repositioning. I pray you will snatch a whole cloth of them out of the receiving position. Do something supernatural in their lives and put them in the giving position, the blessed position. Do it supernaturally now in the name of Jesus. Do it because they crave it in their spirit. Do it because they are tired of struggling. Do it, God, because they're committed to being a giver. I I want to be in the blessed position. Is there anybody in this place with me who want to be in the giving position? Show him you're serious about it by being generous. Break that stingy mindset. Break that religious mindset that somebody in the church is trying to separate you from your funds and understand the biblical teaching and principle on these things. You're in the blessed position. But watch this. The Bible in basic English adds more light onto this passage. God help me, Holy Ghost. The Bible in basic English says, there is, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. There is a greater blessing in giving than receiving. So wait a minute. The one who is getting the greater blessing isn't the one who is receiving. But oh God, the one who's getting the greater blessing is the one who's giving. Because once, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Once the one gives, the Bible says he gives seed to the sower. When God sees you give, God releases something else to you. The giver only gets what you gave. But because you gave, God gives to you. Let me say that one more time. The giver only gets what you gave. But when you blessing to you, then what you give, I want to receive the greater. I want to receive the greater blessing. Somebody holler, I want the greater blessing. Oh, somebody say it again. I want the greater blessing. Oh, the greater blessing don't come from being the receiver. The greater blessing comes from being the giver because God gives to you. Oh, God help me, Holy Ghost. I'm almost done. Can y'all give me five minutes? Hallelujah, somebody. Hmm. The contemporary version says more blessings come from giving <laughs> than receiving. 
Stand there with him. <laughs> Whoo, help me, Holy Ghost. Cameras, y'all get this. <laughs> they are blessings. I am the giver. He says, more blessings come from giving than receiving. As the contemporary English version says, right? So when I read myself to give, and God sees that disposition, them blessings start to come. Come slow, come slow, come slow. Let's milk this. It don't matter where I go. It don't matter what I go through. I can be going through hell and high water. Them blessings are coming. I can be going through a wilderness experience. Those blessings are coming. I can be, I can be praying in a lion's den. Those blessings are, people could be talking against me. Those blessings are coming. I wish I had a witness up in here. They could be lying and scandalizing my name, but ain't nothing they can do to stop my blessings from coming because more blessings come from giving than from receiving. And when you release your gifts, those blessings come. And just like David said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Those blessings will eventually overtake me. And suddenly, the blessings will bring me out of my bondage. The blessings will bring me out of my wilderness experience. The blessings will bring me out of my storm. Because more blessings come from giving than from receiving. How many want them blessings to come? How many want those blessings? I'm prophesying over somebody right now. You got some blessings coming right now. And God is waiting for you to be the giver. He's waiting for you to release the gifts so he can release the that is hindering those blessings from overtaking you is you're withholding the thing that God is requiring you to give. If you see it, say, uh-huh. Uh -huh. If you receive it, say, come, blessings, come. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Thank you, brothers. In the name of the Lord Jesus. More blessings come. More blessings come. Hallelujah. And I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this. Thank you for the extra time. Number five, generosity expands your influence. God says, I not only release more blessings and more blessings will come from you, but God says, I will expand your influence. The more generous you become, the Bible teaches us, the more influential you will be. And we got to learn how to have God influence. We're influenced by the wrong things. But when you have the God influence on your side, God influence will make the difference in every circumstance in your life. Influence does not come by what you receive. It comes by what you give. Can I say it again? Influence does not come by what you receive. It comes by what you give. The problem with Christian people is you would rather be famous than influential. It is what it is. And I'm not talking against social media because it can be a thing for good. But the problem is you're trying to be famous. You're trying to be Facebook famous. And God isn't interested in making nobody famous. But what God does want to do, he wants to increase your influence. We've gotten so bad that if folk can't be famous, they will settle for infamy. Infamy is fame due to the wrong reason. And that's why all these reality shows are so scandalous and ridiculous and perpetual wait the uh, impossible and negative things amen because folk don't care if they can't be famous they'll be infamous they don't care if they're being known for scandals they don't care if they're being known for shameful indecent things they just want to be known but church God has no use for your fame he has no use for your infamy God wants you to be influential and the God kind of influence is the ability to positively impact and change Change somebody else's life. Is there anybody in here who wants to be? I wish I had a witness up in here who wants to be an influencer for God. That means that when you go to work, your presence influences things. Uh, that means when you go to church, your presence influences things. That means when you go to your sorority or first fraternity or your club or your organization, your presence influences things. That means when you show up at your family reunion, your presence changes things. I wish I had a witness up in here here that means when you go to the neighborhood party your presence it changes things because you are an influencer for God and you will influence in people in a positive way the Bible actually teaches that when you are a generous giver God will grow your influence 
Where do you see that at, preacher? Where do you see that at, preacher? And I'm done. Proverbs 11, 24 says, There is he that scattereth yet increases, and there is he that withholdeth more than his meat, but it tendeth to poverty. Let me read it to you in the message Bible. It makes it plain. It says, The world of the generous gets this. Get this. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the generous gets larger. What does that mean? God is going to increase your influence. God is going to enlarge your territory. God is going to stretch the boundaries. You're going to have influence in places and with people you don't even know you have influence with. You're going to influence the lives of people you made you don't even know you know. But God is going to make it that they see your witness. They see your testimony. They see your integrity. And you're going to have an influence on their life. Do I have a witness? Have you ever met anybody who was watching? you and you didn't know they were watching you until one day they told you you don't know me and you don't know this about me but I want you to know I've been watching you and you've been such a blessing to me you've been such an if it had not been for you I'd have given up if it had not been for you I'd have lost my mind if it had not been for you I'd have took myself out I ran into two people in the grocery store just yesterday who stopped me in the aisle and said wait wait aren't you aren't you aren't you Pastor Glover and I said yes I am him and and they said, you don't know me, but I watch your ministry on the YouTube or the Facebook. And I want you to know I was praying to God that I would meet you one day. I just want you to know your ministry saved my life. Your ministry changed my life. And I want you to know. Lord's in people like that, that I did not even know. God says, show me you can be generous. Show me you can be generous and I'll grow your influence. I'll make your territory be larger and larger. And conversely, the rest of that says, but, 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 but he that withholdeth more, uh, but, but, uh, but, 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 but the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Stingy people, small people. Take issue with the Bible, not with me. <laughs> you small. You think you big, but you small. Don't matter how much money you have, if you are stingy, the Bible says you are small, and you're going to get smaller. Because God, God does not want the poison of your stinginess to spread. Because attract people to them. Oh, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Take them to the party because you know they ain't bringing nothing. <laughs> when you know somebody's stingy, you don't want to bless them because you know you ain't going to never see it again. Stingy, you don't want them involved because they don't contribute nothing. The world of the stingy gets smaller, smaller. When you are stingy, you're going to die alone by your. But I bind up the spirit of stinginess. Somebody said with me, I bind up the spirit of stinginess. I bind it up and cast it down. Hallelujah. I release the spirit of generosity. Get ready, get ready, get ready. I feel the spirit of T.D. Jakes again. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready for God to enlarge your world. Get ready for God to make your territory larger. Get ready for God to give you influence in places you didn't even know you had influence with because of your generosity. Somebody shout glory, hallelujah. Hey, God. And then number six, number six. Generosity opens doors and elevates you. It opens doors and elevates you. That's the meaning of Proverbs 18 and 16, which says, a man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. A man's gift, a man who's generous, his gifts make room. Open doors. Open doors. And uh, it makes room for him and bringeth him before it ushers him into the presence of, elevates him before great men. 
It opens doors. And it elevates you. It gets you into a company that you didn't think you belong in. Because great people want to surround themselves with great people. Anybody who surrounds themselves with people, quote unquote, who is either dependent on them or less than them are not great people. They want to be envied. They want to be loved. They want to, they, they want approval. People who want to be great and who want their influence to spread surround themselves with people who add value in areas and ways that they do not. They're not intimidated by that because they know that that is the path to greatness. And when those people see that in you and they are great, they want you to be connected to them. And those are the kinds of people God wants connected to his church and to his kingdom and to his work. If you all understand, he's called us to, to give as an act of generosity. It's about your disposition. It's about your attitude. It is about understanding that when you give, you are in the blessed position and God has made some promises in regards to making certain that you have. Because again, Paul says, he gives seed to the If you don't sow nothing, he's not giving seed to you. Say amen. If you learned something today, can you say amen? See, this is why I don't believe in browbeating you about money. This is why I don't believe in manipulating you about money. This is why I don't believe in emotionally about making our because ultimately that leads to disappointment and ultimately that's not something God honors. I'd much rather teach you the principles of God and have you be a people that respond based on the principles of God. Can you receive that? Silence the voices of those who read a text, what it says, but don't know what it's teaching. Please, don't go to Facebook for your Bible teaching. You have a doctrine in ministry right here. Earned. And, 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 and one of my spiritual gifts is Bible interpretation. Now, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm confident enough that I'm a good preacher, but I'm a great teacher. And, and, and I don't say that, I, I, I don't say that to brag. I say that. He's gifted me with the gift of interpretation to not only read, but to understand and to explain. Amen. So you who are connected with this ministry, you who join us, you don't need to go to Facebook to learn and know what you need to know. Because you got to understand, and why am I saying that? Because there's no accountability there. None. None. You don't know them people and they don't know you. They're not responsible for your souls. They don't teach you, train you. They don't marry you. They don't counsel you. They don't bury your dead. They don't pray for you. They don't visit you when you're sick. It just amazes me how Christian people will turn to somebody who's not a shepherd of your soul to receive spiritual food. It's because they don't want to just do right by the church. Don't be those kinds of people. How many are committed to being generous people? Hallelujah. You gave me a few extra minutes. Uh, 
I've been teaching intentionally on aspects of giving. I put before you a need last week. So for those of you who missed it, and for clarity, let me state it again. And I'm teaching because I want you to respond on principle. Amen? The church facilities received damage <clears throat> during the hurricane, for which we did not receive enough insurance funds to cover. All of the buildings were damaged. The parsonage, which is, is fully repaired now, we're just waiting to get it restored. The Damon building, which is fully repaired now, we're just waiting to get it restored. We still need repairs and painting to the daycare. And in our main worship facility and Frederick A. White Fellowship Hall, all of the windows are damaged and need to be replaced. The windows have some urgency because if we don't get a portion of the windows fixed, the insurance company is going to drop our insurance. And we need to not let that happen because we've already invested 30, near $30,000 towards a deposit on the insurance. And we're currently paying $4,000 a month to have hurricane insurance. To our so, y'all, ain't your time to stop that, please. That donations are greatly appreciated and important to this ministry. And for Media? your convenience, there are four ways to give. Online at mthermanchurch.org. On Cash App. Media. Thank you. Somebody's eager. <laughs> Give me a few minutes to hear me. $4,000 a month, that's just on. You never know when you're going to get a storm. And we, it, most of you, you think this is all the property the church owns. We have expansive property. And we have five distinct buildings. Uh, so, if we don't get the portion of windows done that the insurance company is dictating, we would have been poor stewards of your money because we pulled $30,000 from the church budget just to get insurance. Oh, y'all understand it. That's mandating, okay? Uh, but to get them all repaired and put hurricane-grade windows in so that when there is a next storm, the windows are designed to withstand it. That total amount, and this is the need we put before you, is $52,000. Now, since this storm, we've not asked the church for anything. I've just encouraged you all to continue to be faithful with your tithing and your offering because that's how we run the ministry, and I want to encourage you still in that. But has the church asked you for anything? Not one sacrificial gift towards the maintenance and upkeep of all of our facilities. But I can't go to the budget for $52,000 because I don't want us to be broke. So I'm coming to the church, to you, our members and friends, to say, let's own this as a, process, as a project. And I've asked all of our adult members and all of those who are able, our leaders, our business uh, people who are able to give a minimum of $1,000 towards that. Uh, if you're able to give more, we will receive it. But as a minimum amount, and this is if you are able. And all that is, is you taking a look at your finances and saying, has God blessed me enough to sacrificially give the ministry $1,000 toward the windows? If everybody who's a, well, how we know where the money going? But well, doggone it, you're going to see new windows. That's pretty simple. If you don't see no new windows, then you raise a question about where the money went. But if you give the money, you're going to see windows. That's where it went. They make very practical. If you can't do 1000 we ask 750 If that's too much, we ask 500 And if that's just not a part of what you're able to do, we ask you to give the best sacrificial gift you can. Amen? But I believe, I believe that there's $52,000 sitting in here right now. And amongst those who are listening. If we didn't have it, God would not direct me to bring it to you. Amen?
So mm -hmm. that's what's happening here. It is to safeguard our operating budget, safeguard our reserves, amen, so that we can take care of this uh, and, and get some upgraded uh, windows to protect our facilities. We have declared the fifth Sunday as Sacrifice Sunday. That is the 29th. And I'm asking that all gifts be in by the 29th. Amen. You can give it before. And we have a handful of people who've already given their $1,000. So those of you who've already given, thank you so very much for hearing and responding. Amen. Amen. So you can give it um, uh, all at once or you can do weekly installments. My only ask is that this sacrificial gift is above and beyond your tithe and your offering. Because our operating budget for each month doesn't change. Amen? So don't say I'm giving sacrificially and then you don't tithe for two weeks or three weeks. That defeats the purpose. Do you all understand? Amen? You can give on push pay. There's a, a category that says sacrifice. You can give cash out. The church cash app, just put sacrifice in the memo section. You can write checks, just put cash app in the memo. You can you can give um, uh, you can give uh, currency in an envelope. Just put sacrifice on it. You got it? Number of ways you can do it. So church, that is the ask. Amen. And that is as plain spoken as I can give. I'm asking you to sacrifice and invest in your ministry. Amen. Amen. Uh, so we want to transition, extend an invitation to receive Christ as Lord, receive our announcements, and then we will receive our benediction. Amen. Again, if you receive the word of the Lord, can I hear your round of praise? Amen. I talked about the most generous gift that's ever been given, and that is Jesus as our Lord and Savior. He's God's only son. It was a costly gift. It was an act of love. It was generosity and action. But you don't benefit from that, gift, from that gift if you don't receive it. Paul says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raging from the dead, you shall be saved. So there's a confession that is needed and belief in your heart. And I want to lead you in that confession. And God knows your heart. And if in your heart you mean this prayer, your life is over on this earth you will be with the Lord throughout all eternity and God will be with you while you live your life out guiding you leading you protecting you providing for you is there someone present today who desires to receive Jesus into their heart as Lord and Savior if the Holy Spirit is touching your heart and you desire to receive him will you slip your hand in the air that I might see who you are and we will receive you is there one present who desire to receive Jesus Perhaps you've been praying, God, but he didn't guide you to a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. And the teachings you've witnessed have, have blessed you. You've understood. You want to be a part where you can learn and grow. But also you want to be a part of a church that is community-minded, that is working on behalf to make positive changes in the life of the community. Then this is the congregation for you. I want to extend an invitation to you to receive Jesus and to, uh, to become a member of this church. Is there a believer present who desires to receive Jesus? Amen. Those of you who are viewing, if you desire to receive Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior, take a moment and pray this prayer with all of us. Dear Jesus, I confess my sins. I admit I'm a sinner. I ask you, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I thank you, Lord, for forgiving my sins. And I receive the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer or if you desire membership in this church, I want to direct you to our website. Church. Direct you to complete that link, and an ambassador from the ministry will get in touch with you about beginning your walk with the Lord and or becoming a member of this church. Let's give God a round of praise as we turn our attention to our view screen for the announcements. Please remain present for the announcements. Please stay tuned online. God bless you. Hi, family.
to all of our justice team leaders and team members. We're having a pre-annual assembly meeting on Wednesday, October the 18th at 6.30 p.m. The purpose of this meeting is threefold. Number one, to organize for the upcoming annual assembly. Number two, to decide on which issue is our top issue of concern so that we can block vote at the annual assembly. And number three, to strengthen and grow our justice ministry teams. Therefore, members, if you miss the House meetings, you can attend this meeting and join a justice ministry team on the 18th. Sir Francis Bacon said, if we do not maintain justice, justice will not maintain us. So let's do our part to maintain justice in Lee County. See you all on the 18th. Life for justice, justice for life. Ladies, mark your calendars. On Saturday, October 28th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., join us at the Beautifully Broken Women's Conference, hosted by the incredible Delisa Smith. Prepare to be inspired by our very own Lady Cheryl and special guest Pastor Rebecca. There will be a few surprises and it will be a day of healing, strength, and sisterhood. Don't miss out on this transformative experience we can't wait to see you. Attention, young ladies. Discover your best self at the Stay Gorgeous Girls event. This event is all about empowering young women with knowledge, fostering health awareness, and encouraging self-care. We are thrilled to announce this all-girls health fair is proudly presented in partnership with Lee Health. This empowering event is set to take place on Saturday, October 14th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Dunbar High School. For more information contact 904-236-2068 or visit staygorgeousgirls.com. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and at Mount Hermon Church, we stand united in the fight with survivors, warriors, and their families. That's why we ask that you show your support on Pink Sunday, October 22nd. On Pink Sunday, together, we'll raise awareness, offer support, and spread hope. That's Pink Sunday, October 22nd. Join in making a difference, and together, we can conquer breast cancer. Dear church family, in the words of the prophet Samuel, I am come to sacrifice. Come Sunday, October the 29th is Sacrifice Sunday at Mount Hermon Church. We're sacrificing to replace all the hurricane damaged windows in the sanctuary and the Frederick A. White Fellowship Hall. Total window replacement is going to cost $53,000. The insurance company is not covering these repairs, so it's up to us. I'm asking all leaders, business owners, and members who are able to do so to sacrifice $1,000 above your regular tithe and offerings. If not $1,000, then $750. If not $750, then $500. If not $500, then $500. or again put sacrifice in the memo section or you can give by check put sacrifice in the memo you can give it all at once or in weekly installments we ask that all sacrificial gifts are in by the fifth sunday october the 29th Let's serve, grow, live, and sacrifice together to restore God's house. Mount Hermon Church, we got this. You're invited to join the Royal Ambassadors to see August Wilson's play Radio Golf at the Alliance of the Arts Theater on Sunday, October 29th at 2 p.m. Directed by our very own Sonia McCarter, Radio Golf also features three members of the Mount Hermon family. 
we have secured a discounted rate for the last day of the show and tickets sell out fast. So if you're interested, you can sign up in the Fred White Fellowship Hall on Sundays until October 15th. We have a deadline to secure our seats, so no funds or signups will be accepted after the 15th. Congratulations, First Lady Cheryl, on making the cover of One Dominion magazine. We are incredibly proud of you, and we can't wait to see all the wonderful things you will continue to accomplish in the future. Thank you for your dedication and leadership. Congratulations to Mount Hermon Church Senior Pastor Dr. William Glover, who will be honored at One Dominion Magazine's 2023 Beauty in the Community Masquerade Gala at the Sydney Byrne Davis Art Center in downtown Fort Myers on Sunday, November 5th at 6 p.m. Dr. Glover is being honored and recognized for his selfless, unwavering, and continued commitment to God and the community. So join us for an elegant evening of fine dining, live entertainment, and much more. The attire is formal, tuxedos and gowns, and a prize awarded for the best Venetian mask. Tickets are $75 and can be purchased at onedominionent.com forward slash events. To our members, friends, and donors, your tithe, offerings, gifts, and donations are greatly appreciated and important to this ministry. And for your convenience, there are four ways to give. Online at mthermanchurch.org. On Cash App, use dollar sign MT Herman Ministries. On PushPay, text MT Herman Give to 77977. And you can always give using an in house ministry envelope. When using an envelope, please complete all of the information on the front panel, including your contact information and, most importantly, the allocation directives on the left side of the envelope. For example, if you're paying $200 in tithes, place that amount on the tithe line, and a $30 offering should be placed on its appropriate line. If there are no other contributions, add the two totals together and place it on the total line. This process can be used for any area of giving. We also understand you're limited in time when receiving the envelope during offering and suggest that you grab one as you enter the sanctuary or take a few home to complete in advance. And as always, we thank you for your support and all that you do to help advance the ministry and the work of the Lord here at If you have an announcement, fill out the form on our website. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week online. We believe God has something unique to say to you. And it's our hope that you feel his love even stronger today than ever before. Thank you for being with us and have a great week. Yes. I have one more announcement that we need. <laughs> Next week, the Connect Cafe will be closed. So make sure that you uh, get your snacks and your coffee and your tea before you come to church. Amen. <laughs> We just thank God so much for the word today. We're going to go ahead and have our benediction. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And I, I pray, God, that you would just shift within us, dear Heavenly Father, that thing that, that would, would cause us to want to be in the blessing position. ways to be the blessing, God. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now and forever. All God's people say, amen. Have a wonderful week.